Good morning, ladies. How are you guys today? It's your girl, Pastora Janice Batista. I know we are really up close and personal. This morning, I am in the bed right now, and I wanted to just jump on here and do a quick live just to check in and see how everybody's doing. And I also wanted to talk about godly virtues today. I was doing my little devotional time with the Lord, and I wanted to bring y'all on in here into this devotional. And I hope you guys are ready for today's word. Okay, let's get started, okay? Um, all right, so let me get started over here. Look at what it says, okay? It says, has anyone ever praised you for your beautiful virtues as it is done in Proverbs 31? I know that sometimes a lot of people look at Proverbs 31, right? And they look at, especially the younger ladies nowadays. I feel like so, so many women look at the Proverbs 31 woman and they get frustrated because they like, wait a minute, I'm never going to be able to be a Proverbs 31 woman because there's just so many things that a Proverbs 31 woman has to do. And I'm just not built like that. And I want to explain something to you. The way a Proverbs 31 woman was looking in the Bible, it may not be like that exactly today in this day and age, right? Because it's different. Because I know that some women, right, they love to stay home. They love to take care of their families. They love to cook. They love to clean. And there is nothing wrong with those things because literally, I love those things too. But as a woman, right, that is a mom, a mother, and a wife, we also have a lot of financial responsibilities. And I feel like this is a time where we look at the Bible and where we have to reflect on us and who we are in the body of Christ and what it is that we want to do to contribute to society. And I feel like a lot of women may not even pay attention to that. They may not even be thinking about, you know what, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Some women may just be like, you know what, I'm okay just being a woman of God. But at the end of the day, us women, we have to learn to number one, stick together. We have to number two, learn how to get financial, be financially savvy. Okay. We have to learn to be biblically sound and we have to learn to administer whether it's in the house or whether it's in business or whether you administering, you know, at the church, whatever it is that you're doing in your ministry. I feel like it's so important for us as women of God to administer everything with a spirit, a spirit of excellence, right? God bless you, Robin, my love. Amen. And I feel like, um, like I said, so many women don't even pay attention to this or may not even think that these type of conversations are important, but they are because they literally shape us into the women who we're supposed to be tomorrow. Okay. So look at what it says right here, right? So it says, has anyone ever praised you for being, a, um, for your beautiful virtues, right? the way it is done in Proverbs 31. Now, some people may not even understand what virtues means. And virtues means to have standards. As a woman of God, we have to have standards. And a lot of people may not agree with the standards that we have. I know I have a lot of standards in my life and a lot of people may not agree with it because they're looking at my life from an, from the outside and it's easy for them to judge, especially if they haven't walked in my shoes. So there's a lot of people that are going to look at your life and they're going to judge you on your virtues. They're going to judge you on your morals, on your on your standards. And I know that I've been around a lot of women, like I said, in my life that do not have it. And because they don't have virtues and standards and morals and things like that, and because those things maybe were never taught to them, or because maybe those things are not important to them and they're not paying attention to those things, because at the end of the day, they probably just thinking about, you know what, I just need to work. I just need to make some money and bring some food to my family. Like I'm just not interested in all of that. But it's important because if we don't pay attention to virtues, morals, and standards and things like that, we're always always going to be locked down by society. Okay. And what society wants for us and society literally doesn't want us to be advanced. They don't want us to be smart as women of God. They don't want, you know, the devil, he's always working with society. He's always working with demonic 
principalities, okay, to knock down the woman of God. So this is why it's important for us to be smart. This is why it's important for us to always analyze our life, analyze our finances, analyze our spiritual surroundings, analyze the people who we are connected to. It's important to analyze the word of God, God's purpose and what he wants for us. Because if we're not analyzing those things as women of God, then we're not going to be able to be in sustainable marriages. Like we're not going to be able to raise our children the right way. God bless you, Ambri, my love. Amen. Welcome, sweetheart. Amen. You know, we really need to be focusing on our children and focusing on their future, right? I know that some women, you know, believe that it's very important, like myself, right, to take care of the children, our homeschool them, being there with them every day, raising them up and, and cooking for them every day. But guess what? There comes a time in our life where we have to learn to transition, right? And when we transition, they're getting older, they're able to do things for themselves. And what are we going to do as women when they already grown? It's like, what are you going to do for yourself? What do you have to lean on? This is why it's important. Like even me working in the hotel industry, you know, being around corrupt people, people who don't have the fear of the Lord, right? People who, who don't give a crap about everybody else and the work they put in. And th there are so many people that they're so easily contaminated in their mind because they're corrupt. The way they are is corrupt. The way they think is corrupt. And it's hard to go into work environments, right? And bring the kingdom of God there with you because other people are resisting the kingdom. Other people are resisting the God that is inside of you. So as a woman of God, we're going to struggle because we're going to feel like, man, there's no place for us to thrive. And when I was looking at Proverbs 31, the reason why there's no place for us to thrive really a lot in the world is because God wants women to go into their own businesses. He literally wants us to be workers of the home, but he also wants us to be entrepreneurs. And it's okay to work for the system. <clears throat> it's okay to work for people. It's okay to work for different companies, but I feel like this word is going to be so on time for a woman of God that's going to hear it. Amen. Somebody that, that's that been struggling in their job, somebody that has been struggling, trying to find their place in the world, somebody struggling, trying to, you know, put, put everything together, put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Like this video is really going to bless your life because I feel like it's going to be the confirmation that you have been looking for. And it's, and it's something that I'm going through myself right now in my life. I'm literally sitting there thinking about like so many things that I'm going to do um, with the church and stuff like that. Um, Brooke said, I got deliverance done over me and I'm free from sickness. Amen. Abandoning issues. Yes. Amen. Curses for my grace. Yes. Amen. And you see that that's so important too, because when you a woman of God, right, you have now look at this. Now I, I feel like what, what Brooke wrote there is very important, right? Because when we look at Second Peter one five eight, right? Look at what it says. It says supplement your faith with virtue and says and virtue with knowledge, right? It says and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection, right? And brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we see a sister right here, Brooke, right? She just said that she got delivered from number one, sickness and abandonment issues, right? When you dealing with sickness, a lot of the times when it pertains to women in my 15 years in ministry, a lot of that has to do with um, spiritual sicknesses. They're not even ver um, physical. It may look physical. It may feel physical, but it's really not. It's all spiritual. This is the reason why when certain people get delivered from certain type of demons, they're able to move forward and they're able to thrive, right? Professionally around the people with the, with the people that got places in their life, right? So when we look at, you know, the sicknesses that she had to deal with, and not only that, the abandonment issues, right? As women of God, we need people, we need to, the, the reason why a lot of women 
don't support a lot of women is because they're either insecure, they're either not happy for themselves, they're in a place where they, they want to do more, they want to be able to help more, but they don't have it in them. They just struggling, struggling with the spiritual attacks, struggling with the physical sickness, struggling with the lack of finances, just struggling in, in the relationship, struggling with the kids at home, right? So it's like when we talk about being a, a woman of God that has virtues, it doesn't matter what your background is. Like you're going to be able to overcome it. You're going to be able to get out of those circumstances that you're in. You may not see it at the moment. And guess what? You may not believe it, but it, you don't have to believe it because if God has your back and you gave, you keep, you continue to give yourself more and more to Jesus over and over, you're going to be able to get out of those problems. It's just not going to be in the time frame that you desire. And it just not may, it just may not be as quickly. Like everything is going to take time. Like literally now that I'm sitting here, like, you know, working, you know, in the hotel industry, working in, in, in the church now, and just, you know, doing the things at, at home, which is different because now the kids graduated their homeschool and I got to take their pictures. I still haven't got a chance to do that yet, but I will soon. Just sitting here thinking about like, like to me is just so surreal, like literally thinking about what type of business I'm going to run in the cafe, what type of items I'm going to sell at the cafe, what type of places, I'm, you know, what type of things I'm going to do. So it's like, yeah, I'm working in the physical realm and I'm still trying to continue to stack my money to build this dream and to build this vision that God gave me. Right. Because remember, a lot of times you're going to have to go and do two jobs to be able to take care right of your children you're gonna have to work two jobs to take care of your, your husband your kids to help out with things in the house sometimes nowadays one job ain't gonna cut it so it's okay to do multiple things it's okay to take some time off it's okay to go through all of those things because when you go through those things it's helping you build golly virtual even though you may not see it at the moment and even though you may feel like a failure it's okay because God is building something in you. This is why he says, right, in his word, he was stressing about the importance of us having godly virtue and knowledge, right? When you have standards, how are you going to have standards as a godly woman if you've never been through nothing? Like I've had to go through so many situations with different people in my life so that when new people come into my life, like I don't, I don't know what you're coming into my life for, but you're not going to come into my life to observe and give your negative opinion and then walk out and think it's all good. Like, no, I'm going to put my foot down because I've been around people that have done that. I've been around people that are um, watching me and they don't believe in me. So it's like <clears throat> I have standards. I'm a, I'm a godly woman. That means that I'm able to stand tall around those type of individuals that have these ulterior motives that are not godly like because they're sent by the devil right so you got to understand that to keep those godly virtues is going to cost you that's why the bible says it's important to have knowledge how are we going to have knowledge through the spirit of god how are we going to have knowledge through jesus christ through the word right so the word is going to continue playing a major part a major role in our life the more we continue clinging to it right um, Brooke said, and my right arm and my hand and my right leg. Amen. Amen to God be all the glory. Amen. You know, so we need to continue testifying, right? We need to continue not only being transparent with the negative, but we need to also be honest and pot and, and it's okay to be honest and transparent with the positive stuff that happened in our life as well. Like, and it's okay to be in seasons where you're under spiritual warfare attacks and you dealing with all of the blessings, but you're also dealing with the spiritual warfare attacks too. It doesn't matter when we're an open book because at the end of the day, when you're surrounded by love and you're surrounded by real people, it don't matter like literally what they think because what they think doesn't matter. Real people that love you are going to stick by you and they're going to be by your side no matter what. Those moments when you're going through it, those moments when you're happy, like they're not going to judge you. They're going to not act like their life is so perfect and well put together and looking at you like you always weird. Like, you know, this is the reason why I say when you have godly virtues, 
you don't hang around people that's always looking at you, right? Um, Christina, God bless you, my love, amen. Este, you know, they don't bless, be looking at you like you weird because they understand the struggle. It's like, you know how many fake women of, of God I've seen like that, that try to play you out because you're weird. They try to play you out because you're struggling. They try to play you out because you don't look like them. They try to play you out because you don't have the same mindset. You can't have the same mindset. If you haven't been through what I've been through, and you haven't gone through the things that I've gone through, like you cannot have the same mindset. Like it's impossible to have the same mindset because they never had to walk through the things you had to walk through. And that's the beautiful thing about God, that the more we allow him the opportunity to continue filling us up with wisdom, the more he is going to fix all of the areas in our life that need fixing. And we have to be honest and transparent and, and okay with that. Don't hide it because other women are immature. Don't hide it because other women don't ha have your back. Like continue letting your light shine for the Lord. Like continue being a vessel wherever it is that the Lord places you. Continue being a vessel and continue, you know, uh, uh, loving on yourself and appreciating yourself and appreciating who you are and what you bring to the table. Don't look at it like, oh man, like my finances is so whack right now. So like, I'm a nobody. No, everybody goes through moments. That's why you have to learn to build. Like you have to learn to, to grow. One of the things that I love literally Amen, sweetheart. Um, Brooke said, my church family, they're always there for me if I need them. Amen. And that's, you know what? how it should be and we have to surround surround ourselves like even where the church is at we are in a prime location now right and it feels so good to say that because before in the old church yeah we was in the middle of the hood yeah you don't understand it was so many demons so many spiritual warfare so much spiritual warfare so much like attacks like it was crazy the things that we had to go through. And, you know, I thank God for that moment now. I thank God for that season. Ooh, but I even thank God now that we in a different place and in a different level because I feel like where we are now, it matches who we are, you know, not only financially, but it matches like what God is trying to do and the people he's trying to surround us with, right? So I feel like, but God will use you sometimes in areas where you feel uncomfortable and he will use you in areas to build up your experience in certain areas just to see, right? How, how you're going to do around certain people, how you're going to help certain individuals, how, you know, because when you are a virtuous woman, you have to also, right, look at other people and what they're dealing with and what, and what they're struggling with. And you have to be very sympathetic to their needs, right? God bless you, Pastor Anara, my love. So when you are, you know, sympathetic to other people and their needs, what does the Bible say? It says once, it, once you're filled with the virtual, once you're filled with knowledge, and self-control. So now that you got that wisdom, now you have the ability to control, right? Your life. You have the ability to make better decisions. You have the ability to be steadfast in your life because before your life was unstable. This is why I love the Lord so much because he continues to work in our life. Even though other people decide to walk out on us, it's okay. Let them walk out on us. If other people do not understand, the Lord's doing, let them walk out on you. Because at the end of the day, I feel like the Lord is doing something amazing in each and every one of our lives. So God can take the glory. He could, he has to take the glory for Anetta. He has to pass Anetta. He has to take the glory for my life. He has to take the glory for, for Brooke's life, for Christina's life. Everybody who's on here, everybody who's connected now, who's going to watch the video later, the Lord has to take the glory for everything that he is doing in each and every one of our lives. But we have to stay grounded in, in the fact that we want to be virtuous. Like you got, I could tell you to be virtuous, but you got to want it. You got to desire it. Like, why do I want to be virtuous? And why do I enjoy it? Because I'm not going back to the world. I'm not going back to smoking on weed and 
drinking and being surrounded by people who don't have no goals and visions and people who are just stuck in the same places like no yeah they may be funny people they may be great people like they may be people so cool but at the end of the day that vision doesn't align well with me in Christ because I have a soul right and because just like Brooke had to go through some abandonment issues just like she had to overcome rejection and all things like that those are areas in my life that even as a woman of God, I've had to overcome. And I still, amen, listen to this. I still work through those issues. Those are not issues that they just, boom, you got deliverance and boom, they just disappear like Houdini. No, you still have to always work through those issues when you surround yourself with certain type of people, right? That want to bring you back to that place, right? So when other people come around you in your circle, you're like, wait a minute, I know these type, I know this attitude. I know these, these, these demons that come to, to reject me. I know those demons that try to come to insult me and put me down and shame me, right? Those are all demons that come from the accuser, Satan himself. This is why I say when you make up your mind, like, okay, I'm going to be a virtuous woman. Now you got to have a, you got to get yourself a woman pastor to surround yourself with. Yeah. The, the woman pastor is going to have her husband and the head, but at the end of the day, you got to surround yourself with a woman of God that you know, loves the Lord, that that you know number two has a mandate over her life and number three is a hard worker herself and not just sitting there sipping on tea doing nothing as the pastor's wife no that is that was back then we don't do things like that no more it doesn't work especially with this economy no the proverbs 31 women are being birthed right now right in this season, this is why I said you have to connect yourself with other women in business. We got to be entrepreneurs. We got to do it like they do it in South America. Let's start selling platters. Let's start selling food. Like let's start selling tacos. Let's start selling, you know, um, Christian apparel. Let's start doing the books. Let's start doing the businesses, opening up the stores, the, the, the furniture store, the, the, let's start opening up, uh, like so there's so many businesses that you could open up. There's so many ideas that the Lord puts into the heart of the woman, but he does that so that these ideas cannot be wasted. Cause if you go and you talk to your husband about it, they're not going to have your back. If you go and you talk to your children about it, they're not going to have your back. P other people are not going to have your back, but you know, who's going to have your back? Jesus, the father, the son, the Holy spirit, they're going to have your back because at the end of the day, that's what the Proverbs 31 woman is about. She's a good administrator. She knows how to get laundry done. She knows how to fold. She knows and listen, listen, listen. Okay, even if you doing it jacked up, don't worry about it. Like you think I fold, I do not fold. Okay, the pastor could count on me to clean. He could count on me to cook, do dishes if I have to, like you know, dust and all that stuff. But there are two things that the pastor cannot depend on me for, and that is to number one to fold. I could do laundry, and I love washing, and I love drying. But I'm the type of person that I gotta put everything away at the moment. I love to hang up the shirts, and I love um closet systems, like you know the big closet systems that we have. Because I take the pants and I fold them in half and I boom, just slide them right in there. Every drawer, I have a drawer for everything. A drawer for my underwears, a drawer for the bras, a drawer for my undershirts, a drawer for my fajas and, and all that all that good stuff. But you're not going to have, I'm not the type of person that's going to fold 20 shirts nicely and put them in the drawer. Oh, heck no. You He is not. I could come up with money. I could go work 80 hours a week. I could do all that. But folding, no, that's not my, my, my iron. I could do it a little bit, but I don't like to do that. Like I'm not, I'm not that type of person. And what else? I have horrible handwriting. I hate my handwriting. So there are certain things. <laughs> yes. Amen. Brooke, there are certain things. Amen. That, um, you know, that we're not going to be all talented in and it's okay. But when you find things that you are talented at, if you find, you know, services that you can provide for other people, I feel like this is the time to go into business for yourself. Amen. This is a time for you to think about the things that you want to do with your life, right? Think about your future. Think about 
five years from now, 10 years from now. Think about the goals, the things, right, that you want to be able to accomplish. So it's so important for us to have that self-control, right, with steadfastness, like the word says, and steadfastness with godliness, right, and godliness with brotherly affection. Like we have to come up, we have to make that decision in our mind and say, you know what, like as soon as we open up the church, my mind is already met. I already made up my mind. I said, I am going to connect with people in the community. I said, I am going to build strong relationships with people. I said, I'm going to meet people on their level. I'm going to meet people where they're at. And hopefully they can meet me where I'm at. Right. Because it's not like I'm up here and they're down here. No, like certain people may come into my life and they appear. But if we connecting is for a purpose, if we're not connecting for a greater good, if we're not connecting for a purpose, then leave me alone. Like just go back to your corner where you came from and just get out of my life because I'm trying to build self-control. I'm trying to build patience in my mindset. I'm trying to develop myself. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to speak better. I'm trying to be happier. I'm trying to, you know, move forward in my life. And I have enough spiritual things that I got to deal with that I don't have no space for the physical, you know, things in my life that drain me, that bring confusion, that bring, um, you know, discord and division and, 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 and requires a lot of thinking, right? And requires my mind to go into the battlefield. No. No, we have to learn, amen, to be virtuous women and keep our minds centered on no, the supporting other women, keeping other women accountable for themselves, helping, surrounding yourself with other women that are going to keep you accountable as well. Like, I just feel like this is the time and this is the season where the Lord is saying enough is enough. It is time for us to grow. It's time for us to fly. It's time for us to spread Amen. Our wings. Amen. It says for if you have these qualities, right, and they are yours and they are increasing, it says it's going to keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful. I know that none of us want to be ineffective, right? I know that I don't want to be ineffective, right, at the church. I know that when it, cause I have a lot on my mind, right? Cause now the church, it has a lot of different rooms, right? So my mind is like the reason why now I really can't be, you know, connected with certain people and dealing with the drama. Some That's why the Lord will elevate you sometimes to a new season to make the dream, right? The vision come become a reality because it's like now in that space, now that we have so much more space there, right? To do all of these different rooms is going to be beautiful because now I have like the whole sanctuary, where we're going to be doing Eng- um, Spanish and English services, right? Now that we have to figure out the worship that's going to be coming from there, the songs, what we're going to be doing, right, for worship. So we have to not only bring the worship, but we both, my husband and I, have to bring the word in a way where it's bilingual for the community. Because before... We had issues with that before. It was like, do we do it in English? It was just like a hot mess. But now being without the church for a whole year, like, no, we're coming back strong and we're coming back in a way where we're going to be steadfast, right? In a way where it's like, no, we're providing this um, church services in English and in Spanish. And this is what we're doing with the English side. And this is what we're doing with the Spanish side, right? So we have to work well together to administer not only the word portion and the events, but the worship as well for the entire year. Not only that, but now we're responsible for the children's rooms, right? And for the nursery, right? Putting everything together for the children so they can learn too, so they could grow, so they could develop, right? So my mindset has to be so focused, right? On the nursery, on the different Sunday school lessons, on the material, right? And not only that, I got to make sure that we're raising money, okay, to keep the church open, okay? We're raising funds to be able to continue to be a blessing to the community. So it's like my mindset, amen? Imagine you dealing with the financial things like, okay, how am I gonna, am I going to keep the money flowing into the church? How am I going to continue to keep the, the, the supplies going for the children? How are we going to continue worshiping and how are we going to, you know, put that together, right? And not only that, but then now we have a kitchen and a cafe area that we're going to be working with, right? Working in the church to be able to keep 
funds coming in for the different projects of for the church, right? So now I have this space. Now I have like the I was before it was like I was thinking about it. I was dreaming about it. I was like, man, it would be nice if we had it, but dag, that feels like it's 20 years away from now. Like it just feels like boom is never gonna happen. And it's like boom, now the Lord gave it to me. So now I'm like really stressing because I'm like, oh my God, like what am I gonna sell here? Like what am I gonna do? Like I know I'm working, you know, in the in the hotel industry, but it's like, Lord, how long am I going to be there? Right? How long is, is, am I going to be there? How much more money do I got to stack, you know, to, to get this going, to, to be able to walk away from the industry and do ministry again full time the way I was before? How am I going to administer that with the membership for the women on my website? How am I going to continue doing the products for DEA, you know, the digital courses? Like, Lord, how am I going to be able to manage, right, all of that, right? And that's the beautiful part that now I have an office, right, that is a head headquarters for DEA. That's a headquarters for Baselia. And not only that, like, where am I going to record music and where am I going to do the lives? Like now the Lord provided a whole room next to the office, right? Where it's going to be the radio media, the rate is going to be the the broadcast, the radio station and broadcasting room, right? Where we're going to do all of our lives, where we're going to podcast, where we're going to have, you know, a good old time jumping on the live, like literally being able to broadcast on the radio station, our own music from our own record label. But it's like those things do not take, they take time and we want to see things done fast, right? But it, it took time for me to put that record label together. It took time. It took so many trials and errors and me to go through like so many different things. But those are things that are not possible from girls like Brooklyn from me. So it's like girls that that come from like, you know, inner urban city areas is not possible to to administer in that way. Look at J-Lo in the world, right? People was like, no, it's impossible for you to sing, right? It's impossible for you to sing and dance and act at the same time. And you want to now open up, you know, come out with your own little perfume lines and your own little this and that. And it's like, no, this is a season where women are, you know, you got, we have to stop thinking the way everybody else thinks. We got to stop doing things the way everybody else does things. Look at Daddy Yankee, somebody successful. And I'm talking about these people because they Puerto Rican and I'm Puerto Rican and they my people, right? But look at Daddy Yankee, somebody so successful, right? In the industry was able to do so many things for so many years at the top of his game and his career. What he realized was missing? Jesus, right? Once Jesus comes into your life, it's like everything else, you know, it takes a back seat because now you realize, right? That there are certain things in your life that are so important that before maybe you didn't want to pay attention to them. Before maybe you didn't even want to think about your past and your parents and your family and your background and maybe you embarrassed by your relationship, embarrassed by your situation financially, you know, inflation, everything that's going on in the world. No, this is not the season. Amen. For us to, um, Brooke said after church getting bigger and bigger because a lot of people. Yes, exactly. Or exactly. Um, Claudia said you can set healthy, delicious smoothie. Yeah. You know what? That's a confirmation, Claudia, because I was literally thinking about that yesterday because I really do love smoothies and fruits. Like I'm thinking about healthy foods and, um, you know, that's something that's missing right now. Like nobody. And I do that for a, like, I do that for fun. I just never thought I was going to do that for business because if you guys look for me on Instagram and you look for me on TikTok, I have um two channels called Boricua Mommy NYC. I always put, like y'all may not see it on these pages that I'm cooking, but I'm always uploading things on those pages, whether I'm going out to eat. And there's so many things I still don't even get to to post on there because we be eating some good stuff. Like yesterday, we had some golden corral. Like we, I'm always picking and eating here and there. But um, when I'm cooking and I'm in the kitchen, I throw down, my daughter throws down, like we really love home cooked meals. And that is something that is not here. And in, and another thing I forgot to tell you guys is that in the area, we in a prime location, but there's a lot of beautiful people and entrepreneurs. And I feel like <clears throat> even me, like, I, you know, going into like, you know, the Asian market, the Arabic market, like that's around me, like the different businesses and stuff like that. And just seeing what it is that they have, you know, going on for themselves, it makes me, you know, more 
prideful with my culture to be able to also in that cafe do something that is contributing right to my Puerto Rican roots, my Peruvian roots, my um roots from Spain, like my husband's Dominican and Ecuadorian roots. Like, you know, like it makes me want to think of ideas, right? That is going to be beneficial, not only for me, but for the community. <clears throat> we want to be able to have ideas, right? That are going to go somewhere. And not only that, that are going to make us happy. So, so, you know, we have to be able to come out of our comfort zone, right? So what was it that I was saying here? It says, okay, has anyone ever praised you for your beautiful virtues um, that, that you've done as a Proverbs 31 woman, right? What does that behavior and action look like for you? Amen. Let me know in the comment sections. Amen. It says, do they reflect excellence? It says, but of, of, above all, does it reflect a relationship with God, right? In God's world, amen, your virtues weigh as much more as they do as they do for the hourly beauty, right? It says it is more precious than rubies, um, sympathy, kindness, humility, tolerance, and in some virtues, they will make you a true inspiration to everyone around you. And I feel like that's what I want to do. I want to be able to sit down with um Chinese people and talk about the virtues of God. I want to sit there with Arabic people and talk about the virtues of God and just talk about life because I feel like in this season for our ministry, oh, we coming out the box, okay? I'm inviting the Arabics to church. I'm inviting the, the Chinese people to church. Like, come to the church. Come to the house of the Lord. You need prayer. Like, we have to meet people, you know, where they are at. Like, we have to meet Indian people where they are at. Come to the church of Jesus Christ. Do you want prayer? Like, let's pray for you. Like, we have to learn to build, right? With And that's why God will put you in the right place at the right time with the right people. We may not understand what it's for. We may not understand why he wants us to bring the, the kingdom to certain people, but we can't be shy about it. We have to go into, God bless you, Norma, my love, bendicion, hermana, amen. Um, Renee said, um, a relationship with the Lord. Yes. Amen, Renee. I agree. Amen. God met me right where I was at. So true. Yes. Right. And he will do that. He will put the right people that are going to come into alignment with the new vision and what God has for you so that you could be a blessing to other people. And we cannot let the devil hinder us. Even now, I cannot wait to do the first women's conference. Can you imagine? I've been in ministry 15 years and I've never been so thirsty to do a women's conference. Conference. Like I've never been like the type of person I'd be so nervous. Like I know y'all see me mad bold as a lion, but sometimes I'd be nervous for other things like that. And I'm like, oh my God, where am I going to put all the women? What would I do with them? What are we going to do? Like, and now it's just like, I feel like, you know, we have to be bold and take, you know, a big leap of faith and be like, you know what? The Lord put a couple of women in my heart and you know what? Those are the, the first women I'm going to invite and be like, hey, do you want to come when the time is right? And the Lord puts everything together. It's like, hey, this is what we have. This is what we want to do. And boom, and just grow from there. But if you don't start working with a, with a small circle, and you don't start coming out of your comfort zone, right? Because we, we like, I'm the type of person that I'm a 20-man team. So I know that I'm the type of woman that I could do a lot of things. But at the same token, that's not going to fly sometimes. Because sometimes you need other people to help you push forward. Like, we could, you could be a 20-man team, but for certain things, you're going to need other people to push you forward. And not only that, you're going to have to push them forward as well because it's a two-way street. You're helping them and they're helping you. And not only are you both helping each other, but you guys are helping the kingdom and you guys are advancing the kingdoms together because the kingdom of God together, because you guys are focused on a mission. Like what is the mission for the women? What is the mission? What do we want them to receive? What do we want to give them? What do we want them to take away? Like, you know, now I'm more vigilant and I'm more steadfast when it comes to putting things together for the church. Like look at yesterday. I didn't even think it was going to be possible. They had literally gave me a price for the soul Sofas, and when I literally told them that we was going to do it for the church and it was going to be for a ministry and it was going to be in, in the neighborhood, they literally was like, the, the dude was like, nah, he looked at me and he was like, nah, I'm going to give it to you for this. And I was like, all six of them. And I was like, are you serious? And I was like looking at him and I'm like, oh my God, like, I wanted to grab him and just put my hand on his forehead, y'all, and just start praying for that man. 
right there in the store because who does that? God does that. And I feel like, you know, and yeah, I gave him a little something, something, you know, later to, to thank him, you know, for it. And I was like, look, this is for you. Thank you so much. You know, you, you bless people the same way they bless you. Right. But who does things like that? God does things like that. Even the materials that we got, you guys, I haven't even had a chance to testify all of the things that God is doing, even the materials, the Lord blessed us in such a mighty way. The people who are giving, amen. We are so thankful, right? That you guys are giving because God is not only going to bless, not only are we praying for everybody that's given, but we're praying for everybody else who is partaking in this, in this beautiful glory and this beautiful, um, whirlwind, holy whirlwind that God is doing because it's like the Lord told my husband it was going to happen so fast, but I didn't believe it was going to happen this fast. And now I'm just meeting all these new people in the new community, you know, and just meeting all of these people that are so nice, you know, meeting all of these people that are so different compared to the other atmosphere where we were at in the other church in Greensboro. And it just feels different. It feels like it's more meant to be. It feels like it's just a different time. And I'm like, wow, I never seen so many nice people like this. Like I never seen like so many, you know, the hand of God move like this in this environment and just the way it is like things that I wanted to do back then in the past and, and the people I wanted to be surrounded with the atmosphere, the like for you to 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 shake up a principality that's been there for a while like I always told the other church we can't do it with prayer and sometimes you know God will shift you into another area where yeah there's other principalities but they different principalities that you're gonna have to deal with right but it's not gonna be as burdensome because now God will sometimes place you in a different atmosphere so that you can actually make certain things happen that before right was something so basic, something so like, I'm not asking for much. I'm like, God, I just want to be able to impact the community. I just want to be able to do your will. I just want to be able to have like, you know, just a space to be able to do more, to collect food, to have like, um, you know, yard sales, to be able to, you know, collect donations, to be able to give free clothes out and just do all of these different things. But sometimes God has to take you right when, cause when you have that, that vert, that, that virtue in you to be a proper, Proverbs 31 woman, sometimes it just takes time believing and sometimes you just got to be in the pit. You just got to be in those areas where it's just not, you know, fitting the goal. It's not fitting the mission. It's not fitting who you are because I feel like if you learn to accept, right? That's why I remember that song that I told y'all is all working for my good. That's like my anthem right now, right? Every day, every day I'll be putting that song on from Maverick City um, for my good, right? Because I, I used to look at those walls and curse them. Like I used to... I used to just get into the atmosphere. If I were to come into radius with that church, the old church, like literally within like 10 minutes of the church, the surroundings, north, south, east, west around the church, I used to want to knock that city down. Like I couldn't stand that city. I couldn't stand the people in there, the arrogance, the rudeness, the attitude problems, man. I wanted to walk around with a belt and beat everybody upside their head because I was like, this is foolishness. Like I'm talking about, and I'm old school when it comes to my parenting I'm old school, right? When it comes to the things of God, but I'm also modern. I'm also hip. I'm also, you know, adapting to the changes of the Lord. And I just feel like it's so important for you to hear this. Amen. It's important for you to hear my testimony. It's important for you to hear my challenges and hear what God is doing. Because if he is doing all of this for me, he can do it for you. He can take you the same way he took me out of that environment and now put me in a better environment where now the people are different. And I and now I could feel like I, I could be myself. Like I don't have that that burden where it's like I feel like I can't be myself. I feel like, you know, I'm yoked up in this area and yoked up about in that area. But I did tell the Lord this. I said, if you bring old people back into this new environment, Lord Jesus, I was saying that this morning. I was like, do me a favor, Lord, please. I was like, help me to be more sharper and more stern because I'm going to be more direct. I'm going to be like, OK, you came Thank you for being here and being a visitor. These are the qualifications for you to be a visitor. 
boom. And then later when they become members, I'll tell them the other qualifications, the other standards that we live by. Because at the end of the day, not only are they going to be in my mind and in my heart and on the notebook paper with my policies, right? The church system and policies in place that are going to be already boom in place, but they're going to be on the wall too. So we're going to make it look really cute on the wall, right? Our vision, our vision, statement right what our beliefs our mission and when people have they come in they need to align with that because it's on the wall and everybody else is gonna be like nah that's not their vision the way you behaving we're gonna kick you out of here now because that's not their vision the vision statement and the mission is right there get yourself together right it's gonna be where now i don't have to defend myself it's gonna be now where the lord right is defending my cause it's gonna be where the lord is gonna align allow me to stay focused on being a woman of virtue and 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 I feel like everything just meshes together right Brooke right for the right timing for the right positioning for the right purpose because now when people come in I don't have to worry about I feel like them doing the same things that other people did because now it's going to be a different season it's going to be more structured it's going to be more um, beneficial not only for the the new people that come in but it's going to be beneficial for the people in the community too because they're going to see a leadership amen that year has struggled and been through a lot but a leadership that is transparent a leadership that don't mind telling you like yo this is what we doing this is what the vision is this is what we do with the finances like this is what our vision is for this that the kids room you know for this this is what we're trying to build this is what we're trying to do because i feel like so many churches are so secretive with that and they're not transparent and they're not showing people what they're doing and they're not like yeah we do a lot of work like how are we able to do all of this how are we able to move forward not only because of god's grace but because of generous donations and because me and my husband work our butts off and we've been working our butts off for the past year just saving 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 and it felt you know putting in anytime I had to catch that overtime you better believe I was catching it you better believe I was working overtime 40 hours 60 hours at the hotel I was there you know organizing the fridge I was there organizing the housekeeping rooms I was there organizing like doing all of those things like yeah you think I don't want to be like dag I was a pastor that was doing full-time <laughs> ministry and look at look at me now and what I'm doing and no, I didn't look at it that way. And I told you guys, even before we close the church, anywhere where the Lord puts me, he could put me in McDonald's. And guess what? I'm going to thrive because everywhere I go, I am a leader. And everywhere I go, I'm going to set an example. And everywhere I go, I am going to bring the kingdom of God with me. And everywhere I go, people that are corrupt and people that are lazy and people that don't want to be held accountable and people that do not want to um, be an enforcer, those type of people are not going to get along with me because I'm too structured, not only in the kingdom of God, amen, but I'm also just structured in my life in general, okay? I'm just a structured person because I'm a Proverbs woman. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. We just don't play that game. And Brooke said, yes, all of us as one body in the body of Christ, yes, we need to come together. Yes, I totally agree, sister, in the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what kind of churches, amen, as long as you are a true follower of Jesus, amen. And, and all people from different walks and different lives, um, you know, p different paths, we have to learn to just come together and just let God do what he does. Because at the end of the day, I know that my heart is so full of love. I know that my heart is so full of um, a passion and a fire and a desire for the ministry. And I'm going to need now your prayers more than ever because I am asking the Lord to bring me a particular type of women, women that are, you know, from, like I said, urban inner city areas so that I could really push forward this ministry in English, right? And I'm definitely going to need women that are, you know, prayer warriors, spiritual warfare warriors, women that are just, you know, on the battle, struggling on the front line. Like I'm going to need women that are going to be committed to their Bible study growth, women that are going to be, you know, givers and servers, like, you know, women who are not going to, you know, let the devil get to them because their marriage ain't, ain't working out because their children are acting crazy, like women who are just going to be transparent 
and just be themselves. I feel like that's really what I'm asking for. And that's really what I need so that we could impact. Yes. Amen, Brooke. Amen. So we could continue impacting other women like us, other women who need to grow, other women who need to, you know, be more committed with the Lord. And I cannot wait this time to go into the church and not only be a teacher, but also learn to develop as a preacher. I have to learn now, right? Because we all have different gifts. I know I'm a teacher, right? I know I'm a prophet, right? I know I'm a pastor. I know I'm a worshiper, but now I have to take those gifts, right? And I have to now combine them all to work for the glory of God. And I can't do that by myself. I have to do that in the presence of the Lord. And I'm so thankful that now we have a huge um, prayer closet, Amen. That is going to be amazing for the pastor and I, for us to to pray, for us to see God, for us to, you know, seek his face for this new dimension. And that's why it's so crazy, because when the Lord spoke to me literally two, three months ago, the Lord literally spoke into my ear when the sister was on her way and coming from Miami the Lord said 2024 is going to be the year of new dimensions. This is the reason why our fundraiser, the Lord put it in my heart to name it to um 2024 fundraiser for new dimensions. Why? Because everybody who is going to donate, everybody who is going to partake in what God is doing, that's it. It's, it's all about new dimensions. It's all about us going somewhere and us, you know, moving forward for the kingdom of God and us just doing the things that God wants us to do, you know, the way that he wants us to do them. And we're going to um, continue believing in the Lord. And one of the things that I want to do as well, I know I just woke up, y'all don't look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Guys, we have like, uh, I also wanted to let you guys know that I also read up on all of the oil. I just got some new packages in here. Matter of fact, I didn't even, I, I want to show you guys something because I didn't even get to show you guys this. I don't even know if it's in here, but um, give me one second, okay? I wanted to show you guys the stuff that we got. Matter of fact, the, the prayer things are not there. Give me one second. I know I have those sheets i think they downstairs in the box um give me one second okay let me see if my daughter could help me with something okay give me one second nini come here where you at nini come here i'm on the live i need you to come here real quick because i want to show you guys the new um cards that we have to put in the um in the prayer um envelopes but they don't fit like they I, I don't know what i'm gonna do with that i think i have to get a bigger envelope nini go downstairs into that little corner right there you know those little prayer sheets that i got done with my with my picture on it and the oils yep you, you see it it's like a little prayer card is nothing in there In the box. yeah you see a box with cards in it Yes. How many? Just bring me some so I can show it to them. I can't wait for you guys to see these new little cards. Hold on one second. Okay, boom. These are so nice, okay? So don't mind me, y'all. Like I said, I just got up. I look like a hot mess today. I look like a pancake. <laughs> Okay, so boom. So now we have all of you guys may not be able to see it there, right? But we have all the new oils there, right? Um, the ones that we just got ordered there. We have the packages that we've been using, and now I have these cute little cards, right? Look at how cute these cards are with the prayer oil things right there. And then it, it looks crazy right now because of the, the room. And I have my little DEA prayer um in the back of it so that the ladies when they purchase the oils right and we're still working on so many other things right but i feel like this is my way amen to give back to the lord as well and to continue moving things forward at the church right so i want you guys to please if you guys cannot donate at all to the fundraiser, you guys can also help us out for getting these prayer oils for Christmas, okay, to put them in the stocking stuffers. 
All right, this one, I know it looks so crazy right now because of the room, there's no light on in here right now. But this one, I'm going to put some videos on my page so you guys can look at them. I'll, I'll put them in here in the in the um, comment section as well. But these are like the Arma Up um, Heaven Scent um, fragrances for women, okay? And these are the ones for men. This one is called Lionheart right here for men and it smells so good okay and then we also have um frankincense and myrrh okay and this one is unisex this one is for men and women okay so i do have also some new labels that are coming in matter of fact they did come in um but they weren't the right color that i wanted because i wanted to make the i wanted them to look like gold and silver but i wanted them to be metallic and when i ordered them i was so unhappy happy with the labels that came in and I was like man this is not what I was trying to do this is not what I was going for but let me show you guys what it looks like so this is what it looks like for the you see it looks like that but I wanted to make them gold like I wanted to look like 14 karat gold because I wanted to match this and then this is what I got for okay so this one is the heaven scent you guys see it with the little flowers and stuff on them and then, um, let me see the other one. Okay, this is the new one that I got for the men's. This one is supposed to be silver. See, it looks different. It's silver, but it's not metallic silver where I want it to match. So, you know, some of the old bottles, they still have the old stickers on them, right? Those old stickers, I have to finish them and use all of those. Um, but, you know, like I said, if you guys cannot donate, definitely get some prayer oil bottles for your families, okay? Because we still have so much work to do at the church and we are not done, okay, women of God? So I pray, amen, that this Amen. Video was a blessing to your life. Let me see if you guys can see it here. So I'm going to try to, I know it looks so weird right there on there, but um, it doesn't really look like that. It looks more glossy and more nice. I don't know if it looks like that on the thing, but these are the new um, DEA prayer protection cards that are going to be put there, but I have to get um, bigger envelopes. So I'm still trying to figure out the packaging for that. And I'm still working on getting so many other things put together for y'all. But like I said, continue moving forward in your life the same way I am. Continue believing in yourself. Continue being that powerful woman that God wants you to be. And don't let nobody hinder you. Don't let nobody put you down, right? Continue being happy for yourself. And and, and even if, okay, nobody wants to be happy for you, that's them and their business. You continue to be happy for you. You continue to be happy with God. And you're going to see God literally work in your life in such a mighty and powerful way. Okay, ladies? So like I said, don't mind me. I was looking like a crazy hot mess this morning. <laughs> Brooke is like, I get what you're saying. Yes, no more stressing out. Just feel happy about yourself. Go put some makeup on today and go look beautiful. Go be that woman of God that God created you to be. And even if your circle is small, it don't matter. It's better to have a small circle where you could be yourself than be surrounded by so many women where you can't even be yourself. Okay, that's better to me is, you know... <clears throat> to me, that's worth so much more. Amen, Annabella. God bless you, my love. Amen. So like I said, ladies, please, we're going to go pick up more um things for the church. We have to get so much more furniture. We have like so many more things, okay? So if you guys can't help us and donate, please get the prayer oils and put them in your stocking stuffers. Give one to your mother-in-law. Give one to your sister. Give one to another sister in Christ. And let me tell you guys, they're only $10, okay? So you can definitely contribute and help out a lot, okay? So it's just $10 and I think the shipping is only $5, okay? Like four fifty, something like that, okay? So um, you know, continue being a blessing and continue paying attention to our Facebook page and where I'm going to be putting everything that we're doing for the church, how we spending all the, the finances and how we moving forward. You guys are going to be able to see how we're, um, you know, putting everything together. Okay, ladies. So I love you guys and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bendiciones.